Yeah, it, it, this is going to be a, a sort of a, a slant on robot, but I'm going to chat about why I, I wish I wasn't human um, because of the issues that I've had with the Shed project. I, I realised there was a problem, an issue with me, when normal things like eating, sleeping, and urinating were becoming a real inconvenience to me. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I, I still, even yesterday, everything was, was, was held off until absolute kind of necessity. Um, I didn't eat yesterday until I've been maybe 20 to 3, and I didn't brush my teeth until about half past four. So, <laughs> think, so <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's quite a struggle. Um, this is this is the shed. This is this is what I'm going to completely illustrate and catalogue. Um, doesn't really give you a kind of a true impression there with with just the the concentration of items and jars and things. Um, I. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to start talk, talking about this um, from the point of view of the most frequently asked question is why, why am I doing this? Um, and I think in, in 2013 I started uh, just a mini little project, a draw, draw in a day book where I started in on January the 1st and then just worked all the way through until, uh, until the end of the year. And that was quite nice, it was quite nice to have that kind of, kind of prolonged project and I think it really did pave the way for for the shed project, um, I, I've got um, a, a ridiculous kind of urge and a need to draw, and and this project is kind of really satisfying that for me, but has brought along lots of other issues. Um, I, I've I had um, a real scissor fetish. I really love drawing scissors, <laughs> and and I've had people kind of donating me really <laughs> crazy weird scissors. Um, uh, a friend lent me. Um, a pair of medieval scissors uh, that were just uh, fantastic, and it was really hard work to actually give them back. Uh, <laughs> so I started I started drawing tools um, in around about September time in the Drawn a Day book because I, I with my sixth form in school I say I'm, a, I'm an art teacher in in Hanford West um, with my sixth form was every September just basic skill building I get them to draw the school tools because it's it's just really good practice you know drawn skill geometry spatial awareness all this kind of stuff. So I, I enjoyed that, did lots of those, and I thought, well, it'd be great that if the next kind of drawn a day book for 2014 was going to be all the items from my grandfather's tool shed. So my, my drawn a day books are outside on the table there, and they're, they're only A5 in size. Um, so that, that had um, issues. So this, this is actually the first page from 2014, so that's January the 1st to the 4th. And I quickly realized that the project was unsustainable. Um, so I stopped on the 12th um, because initially it was the tools that got me excited. Um, but it was the, the little jam jars full of, you know, the collections of bits and bobs that, that, that were, were just amazing, and uh, which is what I wanted to, to catalog. And, and I wanted to kind of save as well. Um, so yeah, so that, so that, that stopped completely. And, and this book continued then just to be, um, a collection of collections. Um, so I kind of like repetition um, and I'm almost creating sort of patterns fr from these things. Yeah, so this, this was the, f this is page one in, in the Shared Project book. And if you can see there, it's got, I've got two ball bearings. One of them I've got times one and the other one is times seven. So I thought at, at, at that stage I wasn't going to draw multiples. I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and then I've, I've been increasingly frustrated as, as a teacher. Um, I've been teaching for nine years, and, I, and I've seen the, the, the volume of work the kids are producing, especially sixth form, over the last nine years. It's kind of it's, it's dropped quite dramatically, um, and it's I know it's it's with the kind of with with the rise of social media, and and they kind of you know their attention span is gone. They're not you know they don't realise that for a successful final piece, you know you, you know you really need to put the time and effort in. So I thought, yeah, I'll show them. <laughs> um, and 
and it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's become this. So, and even, so sort of going back to some of my earlier pages, um, it's kind of refreshing for me to see, sort of see where the project started and, and how it's kind of developed. And I thought, thought this was great that quite early on, I realized that even, that even the packaging for these things, I think that the bottom bit there, they've got two to one scale, is um, a small kind of craft knife packet. So I, t I took the craft knife out to draw page one, and I just thought that was, that was equally as lovely. And I thought, you know, even on page three, I, I, I need to, to look at the packaging as well. So I've decided that if it's already, if the packaging is already open, then I'll take the item out, draw the item and the packaging. But if, if it was never opened by my grandfather, then I'd kind of, I, I'd leave it and I'd draw the items in, in the packaging. Um, my grandfather died 21 years ago next month. Um, my grandmother has treated the shed like a mausoleum since. Um, she gets very agitated if even like the closest family members go anywhere near the shed and she's kind of, and from her seat in the living room, she can see straight through the outhouse, straight down the garden path, straight to the shed. So it's kind of a military operation really to, to get anything out. Um, my, my mum runs interference, so she'll go and get my granny because we live on the same street. <laughs> So we kind of, I'll give her the nod, she'll go and, um, you know, get her to, down for a cuppa or some food. Um, so I kind of leave through the back way, go up the back lane, sort of sneak in the back way. And then my, my, my dad is communications expert, so he, <laughs> so he has the, he's got his phone. Uh, and because my, my, my grandmother, she'll, even though she's a, she's a fit 80 odd, she's, um, she's quite erratic. And sometimes she'll stay at my parents for ages and they go in. When's she going to go? And then sometimes she wouldn't even finish her cup of tea and she's off. So we, it's, it's really difficult. So my, my, my dad will ring me and go, quick, she's come in. So I'll have to kind of put, put, place all the items that I've taken out over the garden wall because that's where her brother lives. Um, <laughs> and he's, he's, he's in on it, so he's, he's cool. So, so I'll place the things over the garden wall and then kind of run around and go, hi, um, with, with empty hands. Uh, and, and then quite often I've had to kind of go back around and kind of snipe up the garden path um, because the wall is low, so I can't, and, and then retrieve the things and, and, and extract them. So it's, that, that, that for me is the most difficult part of the project. And <laughs> I've, got, I've, I've got an exhibition opening in, it's in the Rumley Valley and it's in, um, in a heritage centre uh, that's, that's on the pit head that my grandfather mined um, in the village that my grandfather grew up. So his, you know, all of his tools are kind of going home. Um, uh, but it's going to be really difficult for my, for my grandmother because the, the, the museum and the heritage centre want lots of photographs of, of my grandfather. So we're kind of, we've been pinching things from my granny's house for the last six months. So it's going to be difficult for her. Don't know whether to invite her yet or not. <laughs> also, these, the, the little tobacco tins and everything, which are, which are really lovely. Uh, I started by just, just numbering the, the container because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross-reference everything and, and create a complete inventory. So I'll, I'll go through everything. Um, I'm not sure whether my dad knows it yet, but he's going to sit down with me and we're going to go through everything from item number one and we're going to write down exactly what these tools are and bits and bobs are. So I started off thinking it was ridiculous to, to number all of the items. But I, I was doing... Um, I did an artist in residency in Tenby Museum and these... These items were out of the first cantilever toolbox. So all, all, all of the little, um, all of the, the smaller bits were actually in the same tray as the big spanners. So I started off, so I numbered all the spanners, and I was talking to people and I was distracted. So I started numbering the smaller objects, and that was never my intention. And then I thought, well, they, they deserve equal importance. You know, you, know, if, you know, what's saying that, you know, I should number the spanner and then not sort of number that small scrap of wood that's kind of got no purpose in there whatsoever. But it probably would have. You probably, my grandfather probably saved it for spreading glue or something. So, so that, that day, I think the project became what it is, where everything, regardless uh, of size, would, would have equal importance. And I've kind of worked out that if I can pick it up and, and, and rub it and it doesn't disintegrate, then I'm going to draw it. <laughs> um, because there's loads of kind of like, there's oil and rust in cobwebs that make these kind of, you know, there's clumps of things everywhere in all the shelves. Um, so that's the only thing I'm not doing, but everything else I've got kind of used matches, used staples, you know, the, the, the tiniest little thing, the whole lot is going to be catalogued. Right, this, this is quite important as well. This is back to my drawn a day book. Um, I had some real kind of serious kind of personal issues 
um, about 18 months ago, um, was completely dissatisfied with everything in my life. And I thought, okay, I'll change it all at the same time. And, and, and that doesn't work. Um, so it was my, 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 my want and my kind of desire to, to draw was, was so massive. And that was kind of being robbed from me by, by school, really. Um, you know, the energy that, that I was given was, was just too much to, in, in the wrong places. So I'd, I'd come home and I'd often work until two in the morning after full day's teaching. And, and I was just kind of, yeah, I was on self-destruct. It wasn't good. So I, I, I just thought, right, okay, man up, make a decision. So I went into school and just said, I'd like uh, an unpaid sabbatical, please. Um, so I remortgaged my house, took the year off, and oh my God, it was the best decision I ever made. It was fantastic. Um, and yeah, never looked back at, at all. So and I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Even the fact that I've actually I decided I am going to, go, going to go back in September, but I'm only going back two days, and, and this is going to carry on. Uh, yeah, and, and another obvious motive for me um, is the sort of the environment I grew up in. You know, all of the kind of in, in, in the South Wales valleys. You know, we all, me and my brothers all played rugby, and you know, all, all my my family have got you know real kind of manly jobs. They're kind of they're welders, they're steel fabricators, plumbers, electricians, miners, and and I'm educated in the arts, and I'm vegetarian. So, <laughs> so it's kind of like, and and when. When the drink gets the better of me, I kind of feel kind of a, a really irrational guilt for kind of uh, almost leaving, and it's really bizarre. <laughs> so I, f I feel that this this is a really nice way, kind of for me to atone for those sins. It's like so. I, <laughs> I'm a, I, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I, I I am working with 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 tools, honestly. So, but like the sh you know sheds and garages, you know, played a massive part just in in, in me growing up, really. Uh, you know, I was, you know, I was always up in this, I was in this particular shed, you know, fixing, making my skateboards or whatever, and uh, I, I'm, I'm finding, even in the jam jars now, I'm finding little bits in the jam jars that, that were mine growing up, because my grandfather wasn't a big skateboarder, so they must have been mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there was, there was little kind of like rugby boot studs, and I kind of, tr you know, tr track back and do, and do, do the maths, and, you know, they, they would have been mine, because my, my other brothers were too young. And little tiny bits of graffiti where I kind of ripped my name, which is which is really really lovely. So yeah, that's uh, that, 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 that's a, that's a very big reason that I'm kind of kept doing this. And pe people ask about my my level of patience, and I'm quite lucky because I've got lots. Um, and I suppose sort of growing up, my parents had kind of instilled quite quite a quite a good work ethic in me, uh, you know. And you know, they 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 are very busy, very hardworking people. So you know, so being productive and working hard is kind of you know something that was. Uh, well, it, it was quite easy to me, you know, and, and, and I enjoyed it. Um, this is one of the darkest days of the project so far. These four pages, you can see, that I'll show them in the, in the book later. I, I opened a small Tupperware, and it was kind of one of these old, rusty, like ones from the 70s that you couldn't see through, so I had no idea what was in there. I opened it, and it was full of these little kind of pillboxes, and inside them were brass rivets. <laughs> Right, and my heart was in my boots, <laughs> and 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 in 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 this Tupperware as well. Um, my grandfather had, had put tweezers in the Tupperware because they were so small. I I couldn't physically pick them up with 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 my hands with my fingers. I couldn't pick them up, so I had to count these things out with with the tweezers, and that's when I thought. <laughs> You know, I, I do wish that I was a machine that there was that I could just kind of switch off and do this repetitive. Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've I've done a lot of factory work in the kind of you know in my university holidays and stuff, and it kind of set me in good stead for this. But I did, but but these pages, um, sorry, these ones with 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 these small brass rivets, I had. It was I was six days a six day solid block of, of, of documenting and, and I, I realized that I, I hadn't like gone outside, I hadn't done anything, I just kind of <laughs> sat down and I was drawing these for six days and, and, I, and I, just, I just stopped and had to leave, I left, I just left, I left all the lights on, I left everything as it was and just did laps around town and it was just walking around town because I, 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 it, it had taken me to, that was it, that was my, <laughs> that, was, that was my level and it, this one Tupperware contained, I think, um, almost a thousand individual items, and, it, and in four pages of the sketchbook, um, it, it, it totaled a third of everything that kind of came before it. 
So it was soup. It was really, really intense. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but but it, it is bizarre that the rest. My 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 life is a mess. My life is a complete mess. My 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 car's a mess. I wanted to take pictures of of the interior of my car to put in here, but I thought it's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, my house is a mess. My finances are a mess. Everything is a complete mess. But even my studio is quite messy. But then when it comes to kind of even my pencil case is, is, is so anal. Every, all my pens are in kind of, you know, size order. The pencils are in size order. It's it's a little bit kind of creepy, and it's nothing. And it's nothing like the rest of my life. So this 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 book is really bizarre because this isn't a reflection of of me as a person at all. And and this is what people are seeing. And you know, I I, I live in West Wales, and I don't kind of get to speak to other humans uh, that much, <laughs> and especially with this project that I'm doing. So. It, 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 it's got crazy kind of popularity, so people see this, and it, it bears no resemblance to me as a person whatsoever. Um, yeah, and, and that, lead, that leads me on now. This, you know, the, the human part of me is is really letting me down, um, and it kind of feels like drawing has become a contact sport. My my body is in bits. You know, I played rugby for a long time. I skateboarded for a long time, and nothing has taken its toll on my body like like this project. Um, and I, I have regular physio. I've got problems with my neck, my shoulders, um, my, my elbows are really bad, <laughs> my hands, and, and over the last three days, it, it's, it's affected my, my groin as well. <laughs> and I notice, I, 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 when I get in my car, I, I actually have to lift my right leg in, in the car. And, and, it, and it's all through kind of just trapped nerves from repetitive strain. So it, it's, that's what, and I, I watched um, the film Ex Machina, um, a couple of days ago, and I was and I giggled to myself because I was so jealous of this kind of this AI robot because she just went, you know, I'll change my arm, I'll put a new one on, and I just thought, oh my god, that would be great, that would be absolutely perfect, and then I could just carry on because I find myself that, that quite often I have to kind of stop because my body's telling me to stop. I, I know I would happily, happily carry on. <clears throat> Um, but, but then this, you know, as, as, as kind of mechanical a process as this is, um, I, I, I do kind of forget, the, you know, the, the sort of the reason I'm doing it, the, the kind of the history behind these things. Um, and there, there are certain items that that's, it, it's almost like a real slap in the face. Like this, this jar here that's got, you know, my grandfather's handwriting on. Oh my God, I did that. I was crying like a baby for hours because it's kind of, it, it was so emotional. Um, but I hadn't felt anything for kind of like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. I was kind of head down this kind of repetitive nature. And then seeing something like that kind of, you know, just put all the emotion all, all at the same time. So it was, it was, it was very bizarre. It was very bizarre. So th this, um, this is one of my favorite pages. It was really, really lovely to open a box and see random things. It was, Oh my god, my heart was singing. It was great. <laughs> so I love that, and I, th I think it's my favourite one because everything is different. All right, you've got the two badges there. But there's a slight difference, um, and and I, and I really want to kind of scan and render these images because the colours in this in this one box, the colours are fantastic. So it's it's a it's kind of a real shame that, that the project is in is in black and white. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I don't know sort of how many people follow me on Instagram, but this was. Um, this was this was the, the second darkest day of the project so far. I was drawing uh, the the jar on the bottom left. I'd already drawn it once, but it was before I I was drawing everything to scale. So I was drawing that for a second time, and I hadn't drawn it full. So I had to draw it for a second time, but with all the bits in. Uh, it rolled off my drawing board and smashed. And the guilt was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So kind of un under my desk was. Um, about 250 spares for plugs. So I don't know how many people have actually needed a spare part for a plug, but you, you know, you, you, you don't need 250 in your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they were full and it was lovely and you know, the page was nice. But so I just felt terrible and, and I put it on Instagram going, no, this is awful. And people were going, you should draw it. <laughs> so I swept everything up and I drew all the individual shards of glass that came from the jar, and they were kind of, they weren't numbered, they, they will be kind of sub-numbered. Um, so it, it, is, it is getting to that level. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I paint as well. Um, I love I love painting um, and I, I love colour. Again, which is pe people wouldn't know that just through um, through my sketchbook because there isn't any. Um, so th this this is a, a painting on the right. I wanted to get it finished for today, but I just didn't have time. Um, so the, these are the ob on the left hand side. These are the objects that I've catalogued in the book, and it's those objects that I've painted on the right hand side. So I've got I've probably got another another three weeks on the painting, and the painting is great for my body because I, f I find that. I don't hold a paintbrush anywhere near as, as tightly as I hold a pen. Um, so as soon as I paint, my body can kind of relax, but I don't have time to paint. So I, I, that's a shame. So these, these are, um, yeah, the, they're, they're 30 inches square, the, the ones either side, uh, just acrylic on canvas. Um, and the one in the middle is, is 50 inches by 30 inches. And the, the, the one in the middle, um, again, I think it's all kind of like just, just a, a, a test of my patience. Um, that was really, really difficult doing the centerpiece. And, and I, got, I got really bored, so I thought, you know, what can I do? Because, you know, I, I need to carry on. You know, I've spent, you know, weeks and weeks on it. I need to carry on. So in, in the bit in the middle, I started, like, painting imaginary things. So there's, like, a little lighthouse in there. There's, like, a heart with an arrow through it and stuff. So I've, I, I, I kind of made the road into this kind of little kind of series of illustrations just to just to keep me occupied, and it worked. It was great. Um, yeah, this, this, is, um, this is my submission. It's going to be for the National Drawing Prize um, up, up in Anglesey. I've had work selected before, so it was nice to be asked back. Um, but it's, it's the, a, a print, it's the artist proof print, actually, my first print of this that I'm kind of offering as, as, as a prize. So you've got to count how many items are in a little jar outside. So if you haven't done it, You'll be, you'll be winning one of these prints. And we're, we're going to have a live count as well. It's going to be so exciting. The drama. <laughs> the drama. Yeah. That's good. And you, and you oh, we'll, oh, we'll do it in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and I think another thing that's really important for the development of my Shed project is I, I'm, I'm an avid sketchbook keeper. Um, and even, even though the project, the Shed project has only really been kind of 18 months, uh, um, yeah, about, about 18 months with me, you know, I've kept sketchbooks for a very, very long time. And, my, and, and, I, and I, I, I'm getting faster, you know, I can, I can fill a small, uh, some of the sketchbooks out there I've maybe filled in four days. So I think the, the, the kind of the speed and the rate that, that, that I can work at. And I've kind of, kind of trained myself to work at, you know, has, has helped the shared project massively. And, and I do a lot, of, and most of the work in my sketchbooks are all done outside. So I think, I, you know, I've had to speed up because of, you know, weather conditions or normally I've got um, 30 school pupils with me as well. So I kind of, you know, there's, there's that to think about too. <laughs> But the, the, these are all outside, so you can all have a little nose later on. Yeah, um, I've got a few other projects kind of in the pipeline. And I don't know if anybody is interested in kind of traveling or heading, heading west. On the 17th and 18th, um, we're going to do, as part of the, the, the painter repeater, we're going to do Draw Narb within a day. So we, we don't, we're going to get school pupils out, we're going to get as many artists and whoever kind of fancies you know, coming out and we want to flood Narbeth High Street with, with, with artists. We have an artist photographers, we've got, we've got people doing um, sort of con contemporary dance as well based on their experience of a day in Narbeth. So on the 17th and 18th, um, if anybody is down that neck of the woods, please come out and do some lovely drawings with us. And this is going to kind of lead me on to another project where I want to, I want to, to draw, this, this, this is one of mine that's up there as well, I, I want to draw every property in Narbeth as well, which I think would be really, really nice. Um, right, I, I, I can ask for a little bit of help. I know it's, it's a little bit cheeky, but um, every year for the last five years, um, I've set up a fundraising exhibition with school. And it's, it's all right, I've robbed the idea from um, the, the, the postcard exhibition in the Royal Academy. Um, but we've asked artists, uh, students, staff to donate a piece of work which is six inches by four inches in size. Um, and 
it was, it's over the last kind of four years, it's gained so much popularity. I think the last, the last exhibition we had, that one there, we had maybe two and a half thousand pieces of artwork, six by four in size. And we've had work donated to us by um, Tim Davis, Sue Williams. You know, we've had real kind of, you know, respected artists. And, and, and Tim William, um, sort of Tim Davis had just done the, um, he was involved in the Binali in Venice. So one of his images that he gave us was from the Venice Binali as well. And everything is sold anonymously for five quid. So you could have an absolute gem. Um, one, one of the math teachers, he, kinda, he, he does like art, so he's kind of got a little bit of an eye, has, um, he's, <laughs> I think he, he totted up how much he'd spent and how much his collection is potentially worth. And he's had something like 100,000% sort of return <laughs> on, 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 on the money he's spent, you know? So if, you know, if, if anybody you know, would, would happily donate a, a, anything, we've had ceramics, we've had people have made six by four, cakes, chocolate, anything. You know, it can be 3D, as, as long as it can, well, it doesn't even have to be on the wall. We've got, we've got plinths and things. Um, and then all, all the money we raise, ev everything goes uh, pretty much sort of on, on the opening night, which we've, we've not worked out a date for that yet. But we've, we've raised around 2,000 pounds on a Friday night. Um, and, and that's bought kind of etching presses for the art department. It's bought loads of kit for us, iPads. Um, and and this, this year, because it's got so big now, we're actually going to host it in Oriel Q, the Queen's Hall Gallery in Narbeth, and we're going to split the funds 50-50 between the art department in the school and the gallery just to, just for workshops and materials and things so that, so that we can sort of develop these links in the community as well. So sorry, that was a completely shameless plug there. Um, <laughs> Um, it's um, it's normally the last September, the the last Friday of every September, but I think it's going to be on a Saturday because we moved into a big gallery in Narbeth. So I'll I'll keep you posted yeah. on Twitter and stuff as, as when when we get the dates. So yeah, I, I I thought I'd finish with this slide because that's that's what my kind of really geeky kind of art kit kind of that, and, and the, the, these are my tools of the trade and I'm that kind of you know regimented with them and. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I actually really do wish that I, I was a robot. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you.